Mother Dorothy Pottinger, we're here to ask you some questions. Eight kids? I gave birth to 10. I had eight by one marriage, and I had two by the second marriage. Mm -hmm. And then my grandson had him ever since he was four months old. So, how many that make? That's the Jermaine, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, yes. 11. What did you do to kind of keep everybody together? Love. I loved them. Had to chastise them. That kept them together. Kept me with them. It was never, never hard, but I had to do what a parent, a good mother will do. Love. And mainly, I had the love of Jesus. Uh -huh. I had the love of Jesus as my guide. And I was so in love with Jesus. I'm so in love with Jesus. And that love kept me. In other words, love is my foundation. And God just leading and guide me until He just led and guide me. Love is the bottom root. Did you think the it love, was huh? you outlived two husbands? How was it without having a husband? Same thing. Uh, I loved him. I loved my second husband, and I love him. First husband. I had two by my second husband, Bishop Pottinger. And uh, it wasn't hard for me to love. It all was my children, and I loved them. Like, was it harder? No. Or was it, did you feel? I had some boogers. Mm -hmm. I call them boogers. <laughs> they gave me a hard time. But it was all under the love of, I have to keep talking about love. I couldn't have done it, raising eight kids without a father. I brought up eight children to Thompson's. And the other two, it was just the same thing on the mother. Just put them together. No problem. I put it that way, no problem with me. Where were you born at? Dallas, Texas. It's a hospital where Kennedy died. And we, you know, there was the same hospital, Parkland Hospital. I was born there. I'm really a Kelly. I'm a Texas person. I'm a Dallas, Texas person. I'm a California person. Born in Dallas, came to California. In, uh, when I was about 11 or 12. Oh, okay. Went to oh, school, yeah. Vallejo. We stayed in Vallejo. Mm -hmm. And then moved around to different schools in different little cities like Berkeley, and went to Albany High, two levels in, still in El Cerrito. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was more or less born in California. Did you have siblings? Yeah. Uh, I was single then. Yeah. No, no, I mean, did you, have, did you have brothers and sisters when you went to- Oh, yes. Did? It was 10 of us. What? <laughs> My mama, she had 10 children. She had, I don't care to remember. Mm -hmm. But we, she added to a second marriage three, I think. And so she had eight and ten all together. My mom did. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was a family. And it was love there too. All love. Uh, all love. Uh, How did you end up coming to finding the Lord? Oh my God. Don't get me started. I always wanted to be saved. I don't know how I knew about Jesus. He found me. Jesus called me. I didn't find him. I just knew I wanted to be where he was at. Didn't know too much about religion, but I went to church. I wanted to go to church. And he found me then. He found me. He chose me. He chose me when I was in my mother's womb and just placed me there. He found me. Not, and I thank him for finding me. He found me. He saved me. He's kept me. The way I feel about Jesus is that I have a topic, juicy fruit gospel. <laughs> And even there was a time, Juicy Fruit was gone was the best 
about five, five cents for a little pack with mm -hmm. next one and two dollars. And, and we would chew that gum. The more we chew that gum is the juice it got. The more I talk about the word of God is the juice it get. Is the juice it get. Don't get me started talking about the love of Jesus. That's my life. You must read the word, talk the word, walk the word, because that's where your life is. You said something about gum was five cents a pack? Way back in my day. Tell me it's like something about the world back then. Like, how was the world? You there? know, since you mentioned the world, I want to put this in. When God saved me, he took me out of the world. I'm in the world, but I'm out of the world. Mm -hmm. I no longer know things in the world anymore. I don't talk to the world because I'm out of the world. I'm in the world, but not of the world. They call them tone walkers. We made our toys. We, in those days, we put cans together in a, in a string, and we would get on a stand up on them and walk with them. We had toys we made. And you walk with those cans, hold up, up you those your legs, and you get up on them. Oh, so you stand on them. <laughs> oh. And we, we made all our toys and all of that. And I used to play jacks with the kids, ride the bicycle. Mm -hmm. And I do all of that with my family. Being with your family is so important. Keeping your family together. But through it all, through it all, I learned to trust in Jesus. And he just said, he's a keeper. He's a way maker. He is just what he said he is. And I'm looking forward to that glorious, unspeakable God of God, Lord of Lord, King of King. I'm looking forward to getting there. My seat is there and I know it's there waiting on me. You got to love God. You know, like I love uh, Nation's Pies, lemon. And you got to get desperate. So tell them you got to get and go get me some lemon pie. That's where you got to get for God. You got to get desperate. You can't just say, yeah, I love God. I know God. No, when you get desperate, you don't want to do nothing to displease God. Displease God. And when you get like that, you're going to get the word. And you're going to love that word. And you're going to, it's unspeakable. It's just unspeakable how I love God. That love of pie. And I love God like my love of pie. I get desperate. I, you've got to have a prayer life. you got to pray. you got to wait for him to answer. And you got to trust him. That's what you got to do. And you got to trust him. Main thing. Nobody's going to heaven if they don't obey and do what God say how to get there. Mm -hmm. You got to know how to get there. That's one thing. You got. And how you going to know how to get there? You're going to get that Bible. You're going to get in the right church. And you're going to get that Bible. Now, I'm a baptized believer. I'm a baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, believer. That's an that's impact. That's my life. And that is something I will hold on wherever I'm taking it with me. It's being baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, and living a holy life. I tell you, don't give me the preaching there. God said, be ye holy, as I am holy. So I'm kind of stupid to think I'll get where he's going, where he's at, if I'm not holy. So you have to keep yourself holy. See, like me, most I talk about is Jesus. That's my life. In While you're talking about that advice, let me ask you something. That, this one is from Tamara. What type of advice, almost like what you were just given, but do you have anything special for your grandchildren or like future generations? Like, I don't know if it's spiritually or just living in the world. Like what? I want them, my girls, to stay and look like ladies. Mm. Dressed like ladies. And when God went to Eve in the evening garden, the garden, you know what I'm trying to yeah. say.
uh, he put clothes. And what did he cover them with a leaf? And so he don't want you naked. That's one thing I want them to grow up and be ladies. Be ladies. Dress right. Your brothers is there. Don't dress to tempt them. And that's what I advise my babies and my girls and them. Always look like a lady. Be a lady. So that's what all I think I can think, can't think of right now. For Tamara's question. Do you have any personal story or experience of something that may have happened to you that you want to be remembered or for, the, for, for them to know? Look at my life and you shall make it all my life and love, love life. Those are the things I want them to remember me by and follow me and so they can come where Jesus says. That's what I want them to remember me by. And I don't know of anything that I've done that they have a reason not to follow me. I hope that's good enough answer. That is. What is your view of the world today? Like, what is your um, what is your outlook of it? Has it? Is it more evil, or less, <laughs> more better? Or less yes, better? Satan is working hard. Satan is working hard, making these churches think they got God. The the altars, the pulpit. It's it's. I'm so glad I don't see it. Uh, let the world go because you're going to be left here. And Satan is working real hard. He's working from the pulpit to wherever he can reach that he can get you serving him, making you believe that this is God and got the people saying, yeah, this is God. Jesus is going to come quickly. And when he comes, it's too late to say, I wish I had a, a blaming everybody. Be ready. Just know you're ready. Check yourself. So with this world, it's not nothing like when I was young. It was holiness. It was holiness. Not what you got on as far as uh, you just wore homemade clothes. I say homemade clothes. But it wasn't these type of clothes. And you know what I'm going to say? Pants get in the Bible. I don't care where they put the button, whether it's on the man's side or the right side. But God is not for women wearing pants, and it's not for men to do change over and be a woman. Mm -hmm. I have to tell you what God telling me now. Mm -hmm. that's, that's not God. You can feel it. It's not God. God made man to be man. He made woman to be woman. And how you going to multiply? Woman is supposed to be able to multiply with her husband. How you going to multiply? You're not reading the Bible. You don't, you're changing the Bible. Well, God is against that. He's against homosexual. And if you're that way, he's a forgiving God. Yes, he, uh, there's witnesses that he can change. And so... That's, I had to say that. Yeah, the truth. I had to say that. And you know, <clears throat> it don't mean you hate, hate them. Mm -hmm. You don't like what they're doing. Because you know the word. But some of them, some of them is too far gone for me. It's mm -hmm. too filthy for me. But nothing I do but pray for you. So I have to leave a message. I have to leave that message talking about the church. We got hopes for the church, what we hope the church will become and everything else, but where do you see the future of the church? Um, Repeat that question. I have a hope that the church will have a great revival and we will, souls will be saved everywhere, but that's my hope. But like, the thing is like, what is the future? Like, what do you actually see for the I future? I wouldn't take a chance. Wouldn't take a chance. Ooh, I, would, I would get that, I would get that great revival right there in me. Me. I wouldn't take a chance waiting on the great revival. You know, I, I did a, a play in the church. I had to speak at our church, and I rolled some twine up, and I took it to church for my speaking. 
and it was was a spirit by and I throw the ball and they had to catch it. So there's a scripture, you catch the spirit because it don't laugh. You catch the spirit, be fast to catch the spirit. Don't let it pass you because if you don't catch it right then, you, it's too late to catch it. So I'm saying that to say this, if you understand what I'm saying, you better catch Jesus. He don't tarry always. Mm -hmm. never. So no need to be waiting when I can have it right now. No need to be waiting for that great revival. I got the great revival in me right now. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got the great revival in Thank me you, right Jesus. now. I can feel it. Thank you, Jesus. I'm a witness. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, Jesus. And I love you. Thank you, I Jesus. I love you. I love you. Hallelujah. I love you. My God. Ha. My God. Hallelujah. My God. I got the great revival now while it's available. I don't need to look nowhere. <laughs> I don't need to listen to nothing. Because uh -huh. in the world, I don't know what you're talking about. Because I'm all in the world, but I'm not in the world. So you bring me all that worldly stuff. I don't know what you're talking about. But bring up Jesus. I can talk. I ain't no preacher, but I'm a teacher. Mm -hmm. And and God uses me. And when I tell you something, you can believe it if you want to. I'm available. Um, I don't, I prophesy, but I'm not one with the gift. I let God use me when he want to use me to tell you something. Mm -hmm. And I, I learned, I said, Lord, I'm available. Whatever way you want to use my spirit, I'm available. God is a good God. Oh, God is a good God. Let him use you. Hey! God Let is a good you. God. Hallelujah. I don't know nobody I don't love. I don't know nobody. And my smile, God gave me this smile. It, a smile is wonderful. This, a smile is healing. A smile can do more than some things can do. Just that make a, you just smile. No? Mm -hmm. It says good morning. Things like that. It helps you. A smile is a, a gift that some people have. And I know I have it. So, but let me tell you, I know I got the Holy Ghost. I know my seat is in heaven. I'm just waiting for the day. And let me tell you something else. Nothing is impossible with God. Nothing. I can reach that impossibility that I'm trying to reach on this road. It's not saying that I can't live. Mm -hmm. Death has no hold on me. God. God is the one. Do you get what I'm saying? I, I, I feel what it's you're a, saying. It's, it's mm -hmm. a possibility that I can shock the world. It's a, I don't have three people. It's a possibility. God. I'm trying to reach that goal where I can show people God's big, big power. Ain't nothing impossible with him. Ain't nothing. Thank God for my children. Mm -hmm. Because they they all talented. They I got two going home. My oldest girl and my oldest son. They going home. I oh, hope my mama going home. I know what it is to lose your family. But the God took me through it all. That's why I say, just keep praying. You get the strength. God will let you live again with joy. Talking about God and the way he's kept you, had to keep you through the word. So is there a certain scripture? you have a favorite scripture? That Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless your holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and let me not forget all of thy benefits. Yeah. Who is healing all of my disease and who take away in all of my iniquities. You forgive me all of my iniquities. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is with me. <laughs> my heart is filled with thanksgiving. I thank thee, O oh Lord. My heart is filled with thanksgiving, and that soothes me. And the individuals don't know how they didn't hurt me. To be honest, just tell you and get forgiveness. Sometimes I just pray, oh, 
time like this together because you get full of deliverance. And I actually, <laughs> I could quote a lot of my favorite scriptures. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, so many songs. He be doing great things for me. No, I thank you. I thank you. All the days of my life and all of the scriptures. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. I tell you, I got a lot of scriptures. Any book you find that I ever own, you're going to find me in it. Because you're going to see I done wrote something in it when I got out of it. I'm going to find them books, them collectors. <laughs> it can be a magazine. Can I get some out there in the magazine? I write what God gave me, what, what it makes me feel. That's what I mean, what I get out of it. Mm-hmm. I write what I got in it. The thought and the help that he helped me to feel better. Can you share a time where you was going through something tough and it was more you knew that God was with you too? Oh, it's so many. So many. So many tough things. And the toughest thing being, you got to forgive. Mm. That's the toughest thing that you know you got to forgive. I can hear that look unforgive the spot following me around, and I'm just happy. No, that spot, until that spot is moved, I have no real joy. And let me tell you something else. God told me I was going to know when I was coming home. Mm-hmm. God told me that. You see it? You see it? You see did? But I knew, I knew when God was going. He said I was going to go. And sure enough, whatever he did, I know. You feel like you're going home now? Cause honestly, I mean, I got to tell the truth. You're still ministering from the bed. That was my gift. That was my gift. God is still using me. Mm-hmm. God is still just up until yesterday. God is still using me. This is not where I'm afraid and it's a big surprise. God just showed me what he said. I won't know when he takes me. So don't I know? Don't I know right now? He let me know I can come home. He may leave me for a while, but I can come home. Come I know now. See, I know. So this is him letting me know. He told me he's going to let me know. Now this is real life. There's so many that I can't think of all of the... Well, the Lord took me to two deaths of husbands. Those two deaths, that was tough. Me left raising eight child and the two children. Eight without a daddy. And so that was tough. But the Lord even on that. God always dealt me with visions and things to come. And on that, he let me know he's going to take time. I wish, I pray that I'll be in your position one day where I'm yes. 90 years old. Yes. Got to see my grandchildren. So. <laughs> secure in my faith. For a child of God, after God giving you everything, do you have anything that God could do? Well, I'm 90. And even if I got well, I mean, with all this sickness, I'm still 90 years old. So don't expect me to be running like I did. You know, I'm at the point where if I just raise my hand, mm-hmm. that's, that's something, if I can just raise my hand, ain't walking up, just raise my hand and give God some praise. Uh, and if it was his will, I wouldn't mind it if I had reached where he was trying for me to show his glory. Mm-hmm. That would be the second thing. Other than that, I'm happy. I saw a glimpse of heaven. God came to me one night. I was somewhere up in heaven. And there were no houses, were no wasn't no uh houses, people or nothing. And you know when you look for the finale like a firecracker? Mm-hmm. And it's the finale of a fireworks, I explode and wow. You said, gosh, that's gorgeous. God gave me a 
just a little bit of heaven. It was like a firecracker. It was just so gorgeous. Just a little bit to taste what heaven is going to be. It's just going to taste oh. what heaven is going to be. I'm telling you the truth. Mm -hmm. I don't. You know what? Let me tell you this here. God know, must have known I was going to be a liar. <laughs> and I am a liar. Because he gave me the scripture about a liar won't tarry in his sight. I always have to do something funny for a laugh. For a laugh. And so that's the lesson for that one. But my main goal is showing that God is in the way he's doing. He's been Taking me through some what I call hard tests, but they were yet good for me. They were yet good for me. You said something a minute ago. I just wanted to ask you this too. Have you ever seen a miracle? So, so many head on collisions. And on my thigh, I died with the COVID. And Jesus came to me in the hospital. and they came in the room and they said, you know, you got cold. They were swore to something I know. I says, uh, I was so sick. I didn't know what they told me. I know about COVID, that nose thing. They did it again. But God came to me in, in the vision. I was in his arms like a limp doll, doll. He was carrying me. And I was just like a limp doll in his arms. He came to my room and said, let me know I've been, he'd been carrying me three days. So he had been carrying me three days and I didn't know it. And then he explained it to me later. He's in the revelation. He is the word. So I was carrying the word and he didn't do the prayers of the righteous and him. I'm, I'm like, I'm where I'm at now. I should be here. Mm -hmm. This was one time a miracle. Second miracle, tell me it was building that thousand brick. It was a thousand sore pound. And I heard him. And I run out there. And it's on his leg. I run out there and lifted that thing up. I lifted it up. God was trying my face all the time. That's what he was doing. I lifted it up. Ain't no scar on Herman nowhere. And the thing stayed there until Ernie, that brick laid, that was a fence. He was making something for the backyard, patio. And that fence, that piece of tarn of brick stayed there for the gate until Herman, found, I mean, Ernie started to walk it up. Do you remember any times as kids, you know, you being by yourself, were there any special financial blessings or maybe food blessings or anything that just oh. came out of nowhere? Just like, oh, oh one time we was on a thousand list waiting for a house. We got the house, and we was a thousand on the list, but we got that house. And the miracle was we didn't have no food, we only had one can of pizza, but we got the house, moved the stuff in. One can of peaches. All my children, I didn't have nothing else. And God told me, and I said, that Lawrence, uh, he, he, he didn't want it. So I said, well, we going to eat it. Because that's all I had was one slice. He only had the one peach. One peach One each. little peach in that can. Wow. So true. And the Lord told me, I was going to let Lawrence just do without it. He can't eat it. <laughs> and the Lord, but the Lord told me, say, warm it. Warm it. See, I couldn't leave one child without something to eat. I warmed the pizza. And Lawrence ate that pizza and said, whatever they got full, said it was the best pizza he ever ate. Oh, my goodness. But God gave me wisdom. Couldn't stand to see much one child. Stubborn, but God told me, said, warm it. I warmed it. There's a big set of can like that. And we ate that one peach. He said it was so good. Wow. So that was, 
I got so many milk. So kids sat up there had one slice of peach each. One little slice. They could only get one because it was all of all I had all eight of them. Wow. <laughs> so God had eight slices. Now quite probably ain't gonna find but six slices in his big kid. <laughs> oh, that was right. That was, <laughs> that was those right. Just miracles. I done lived a life of miracles. Mm -hmm. Won't you please God? One thing, God is a God of His Word. When He tell you something, mm -hmm. He don't change. When He tell you something, it's yea and it's nay. If He say hell, and you don't obey His Word to give you a chance, you go to hell. Mm -hmm. And the Old Testament was worse because grace and truth has come. We can repent, we can ask forgiveness. But thank God for grace and truth. And y'all got a chance. You got a chance. So I'll go to your next question. We know that we're in time of grace. Thankful for that. What advice do you have for one that's in the church or that's, that's with God? How do you, what advice do you have them as far as staying committed? The word, you stay committed with his word. You can't go wrong Ooh, when you got word. the word. Mm -hmm. Stay committed to that word. And you're going to walk by that word. You're going to walk by that word. That's mm -hmm. that's a big commitment. Stay there because your mind is going up. Mm -hmm. So you got to stay, stick to that word. You ain't, wow. people ain't reading the word. They don't know the word. But that's all we got, Ben. The word is all any of us got. The word, which is true, which is in heaven, the scripture, is, it says, I am the word, when he let me know the word was whole in me, because he is the word. Mm -hmm. So committed to the word, nothing else you could do. And that's where your tests and trials come in. So are you like juicy food, God? You want it? You want the words to become like the juicy fruit, God? The more you read it, the juicy yeah, it gets. Sure it gets. That's true. <laughs> I, you answered that, that question could have been answered better. Like, how can you commit, commit to the word? Yeah. You can, you yeah. Stick to the word. Stick to the word. Mm -hmm. And the more you read it, the juicy it gets. The juicier it gets. Yeah. Like me, when I get to talk about the word, I get juicy now. And I, I have to. <laughs> I, I get so juicy now that I won't share it with nobody else. Because my bishop used to say, husband bishop used to say, give somebody else a chance. So I'm there learning. Let somebody else talk. <laughs> What's that juice? What's that juice for? Uh, and always keep a place where you can find laughter. It says it's like a medicine. Laughter too. It's like a medicine. Put some laughter on top of it. <laughs> but it's work. It's work. It's hard work. As the song said, dig a little deeper in the storehouse. Mm -hmm. It's that word going to make you dig. Because you're going to want to get it. Like juicy fruit, you will want to dig. Mm -hmm. You will want to dig, 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 dig. More. And then you ain't going to take false, in interpret false talk from people. You get that word for yourself. Word. Mm -hmm. And you are no God's word. You are no God speaking. Ooh. You are no God speaking. God will let you know that he's speaking. Like my pastor said earlier, so one time night he was just talking to God. And God told him, will you shut up <laughs> and let me talk? God talks to my earnest. God is earnest is for real. Ernest is for real. Mm -hmm. My children is for real with, with God. The one that say Stevie, mm -hmm. and Stevie got his ministry, which is wonderful. He's out there. What I used to tell God, if I was going to be on the street, I wanted to be on the street for the women. I wanted to be on the street trying to get the women off the street. That would be my my uh my job events oh, oh. job 
he'll go back to you, and I know I was pretty, but I don't think you too pretty for God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we heard you. It's fine. It's the Bible tells me so. I'm pretty in the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. I don't need. I don't need nothing. I don't want to wash my face, wash my teeth. And you know, I know it was all of that. I'm full jewelry. Nobody bothered me about taking stuff off. I went to church one Sunday after I just got saved. God told me to get it lit. Hold my head and look around. I looked around me, and this is the truth. And that was my own way of God talking to me and saving me. He didn't put nobody else in a bad spot. He looked around and he said, Do you see any earrings and anybody ears? God was talking to me. I didn't know if God was preparing me his called child. Mm -hmm. I was on his called child. And I looked around and I said, No. And I eased my hand up to my ears and took them out and put them in my pocket. Nobody never come and say, you know, do you, you don't need this now. God was, had called me and I didn't know it, but he was preparing me for him. And I love my makeup and my, my, my just a little bit. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't like this in that day, my day and time. Mm -hmm. They didn't have another person and you guys you got to wait a minute and change your face and all yeah, that stuff. The whole new, it was just a little cover <laughs> up. Yeah, yeah. But Lord got to save everybody. So instead of condemning, I know it's not right and I'm going to tell you in a nice way, but it's up to you to get to work. It's up to you to say, let God call you and talk to you. You notice? Black women, we got, they tell us we look good. We look at the, our church for how it used to be. When they said we was beautiful, we was beautiful. We didn't have all that stuff on us. We didn't have all that stuff on us. We are naturally beautiful and handsome. Aren't we? Oh, most of us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, most all right, Bishop. Most of us. All right, Bishop. But Bishop told me, God's children. You don't call people that God made. You don't call nobody ugly. Mm -hmm. Say so you don't call them what. But I got something on him too. For some reason, he told me, turn off. He said, she's ugly. Mm -hmm. I said, you said don't call nobody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he, for some reason, he did not like that. Piece. <laughs> oh, well, let me finish the question if you do. <laughs> I'm, having a, I'm having a good time. What value do you want your family to carry forward? What idea? Is stay family. Stay family. Love each other. Treat each other. You can't see each other all the time, but love each other. You're not going to be the same, and you're not going to see each other, but love each other because love will break out when time needs something happen. You will see that love come forth. Might have looked like it's, it's long distance, but it'll come forth. And, and what I want them to see is just, I think, a hope from what I hear, I've been an example. Try to follow my example. But be yourself. Be yourself. All of you individuals. So you have to get God for yourself. They used to have a saying, the parents is responsible for their children until they get 13. We had to pray for y'all till you got 13. But now you're grown up. When you grow up past 13, you're an individual, then you got to go to God for yourself. But you got to realize you need God. You need God. You need God. There's no other God. 13 is, I thought it was 18. Yeah. 13 is, that is an accountable age. They know yeah. what's going on, especially yes. nowadays. Oh, see, that's the difference in the, in the world. They know things, wait a minute. They babies know things when they come out of the mother's womb. <laughs> yeah, already smart. We used to do all of this here, see if they could see us. They come out talking teeth 
and everything. Yeah. The babies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, so they teaching us now then. These mm -hmm. babies, the young people getting all these inventions, and the mothers following them, and they're all going to hell. But I thank God for the things that's going on, your phones and everything. I thank God he made man smart enough because he needed, we will need him. We was going to need these phones, just use them right. Phones do what y'all can't do. Just get them. What are y'all doing? So, anyway, that's the value I want them to mm -hmm. keep in their heart. I don't think that'll be a problem for anybody to follow your life. Yes. Because you follow Christ or follow you, follow yes. Christ. It's the same that's thing. That's right, Ben. Is there something, a legacy, when folks think about you, what would you want them to think about you? Love me and remember my smile. Remember my smile. That's what I would like for them to see Christ, that they can truly say God is real according to the word they see in me. God is real. Lord of oh Lord and King of me. I don't want to make you laugh about something. I don't know what it means. You made a statement, and I wanted to say, give me five. I don't know what it means. I just <laughs> give me five. <laughs> it was good. I agreed with you. <laughs> I agree with everything you say. If you could tell Jermaine something, if you had a message for Jermaine, what would you tell Jermaine? Jermaine is my son. He had a four and a half months old. He's my baby. I just hate when he lost the bishop because he still was without a daddy. It was hard on Jermaine having a daddy. So he stayed with Steve and uh, he, uh, now he's loved by the family. Jermaine was a good boy. Let me tell you something funny he did. He wanted to be a big shot. Went and got some of my seasons and go make him some <laughs> Now that got him in trouble, yeah, I, I know what you're and he about. took it to, to school. <laughs> it was such a tragedy. that got him in. Mm -hmm. But he had an officer there took care of him, watched over a police officer as a guard. Mm -hmm. He would keep with me, with me. And then one time, I noticed my car went in this place where it's supposed to be. No. I don't call a girl's name because <laughs> y'all know who the girl is real good. <laughs> and he was driving my getting up and they, the laws weren't going off. And so the man kept coming back. He said, I'm going to tell you, you, you know these boys, they got ways that, that these children, they know how to get them laws to get out. Jermaine would go out and drive the car <laughs> and park it back but one time, Boobadoo come to see me. Lil Ernie? Yeah. <laughs> and the Boobadoo, sorry. Lil Ernie. And the car, he couldn't give him a space. Because when Jermaine got home, there was no space. So he, and if where you park where you visit the day, Jermaine had to park in another spot. <laughs> that was it. I was still with Jermaine. And my gas, I said, I do gas. He had recorded, <laughs> but we got caught. <laughs> Used all the gas in the That's when I let him go and stay with your dad. <laughs> but why uh, did he still do some numbers? <laughs> yeah. But I got him taken care of. All of the church people, and his, the, the girlfriend, all the church people are going to take care of him. And we're hoping that a miracle happens. So he's in good hands. Did I answer your question? Yeah, I'm sure he's going to hear, appreciate <laughs> hearing his name brought up. <laughs> yes, he's a good boy. Say, so if he was sitting there right now, if you have anything, just tell him. If he was here now? Yeah. He just, uh, he was there, he'd be crying. So he tell me over and over, I just want to hear your voice from when he call. I'm calling, I just want to hear your voice from. Then make him feel good. Make me feel good. And he would be, I love you, Mom. And I got poems 
that he wrote me and, and letters that's worth money that he wrote genuinely to me. You know, I don't like just, I like real poems. And the boys can write them poems and get somebody that can help him get those poems to go on. They would be worth money, the poems itself. So that's it. Is that enough? To, yeah. Uh, you know? Yeah. Hopefully he, mm -hmm. he write a book or something after they hear it. Okay, last question from Buddy Love. Okay. So, Granny. Yeah. So, in your 90 years of living, yeah. and this is a question uh, more pertaining towards what you've experienced as far as uh, our our heritage as Black people, and you now we know you love and believe that all nationalities are all beautiful. Yes. But in your 90 years of experience living on this earth, what could you say about the African American heritage address as black people. What, what I'm doing? learning now is black people. They took away everything. Also, they took away everything from the Indian. Black in the Bible. Black is beautiful. But we started changing our own self and our own color, African makeup and all of that. But we don't have to do that. We can just go on and be us. Just be yourself. Go on and do the real thing, mm -hmm. but stay decent. Mm -hmm. But don't have your head down. Hold your head up and look at that man when you're on interview. Hold your head up and look him in the eye. Don't be, I would get mad at him. You like you shame. Hold your head up. You somebody. Look him in the eye. That's what they believe. Look him in the eye and talk to him. You somebody. You somebody. Love your culture. Regards. And so you notice, I'm going to say this, Lord, I'm going to say this. Your culture is so many people trying to paint and get your color. Sun burning, they, burning themselves up. Wanting to be and, and taking all that stuff off. Want to be natural. The other races is wanting that. So look. Look at me, I'm black. I'm beautiful. You go on and do your thing. Is that good enough? That's okay. Don't, t don't let me tell you what your nickname is. <laughs> you mind if I share your nickname? He, he, he loved my chicken. He loved my chicken. So now he didn't get over there for me to fry him some. And so I call him Black Chicken. <laughs> I call his nickname is Black Chicken. <laughs> That's what that mean, that chicken. I love you in my name, Granny. <laughs> All right. You got, any, you got any closing remarks? Me? Yeah. You got any closing remarks or any questions maybe I didn't ask? Thanks or? for this first time ever opportunity. <laughs> but I hope I help somebody. In fact, I believe when I did what God told me to say, that was perfect. I don't know nothing but love for people. And when I can't love, and they said learn to love, you know what? My husband didn't believe in learning to love. And I don't agree. I had to learn to love then. But found out it's his personality. But the problem was that learning, all our personality, that's our problem. We got to work on the personality. Lord said live peaceful as much as you can with all men. But it lets you know some you won't live peaceful. Some people know what not gonna never like. They never gonna like live peaceable with that enemy. But don't look for him to change. But you gonna change or she gonna love him. You gonna love your enemy. You're gonna love your enemy. And did I have plenty? Did I have plenty, <laughs> plenty of them? <laughs> but I don't know of anybody by the help of the Lord that I don't love. The way God wants me to love. That's what I want to show. So thank you, Ben. Thank you, Granny. And I hope it helps somebody. Thank you, buddy. You, yeah, yeah, you have dropped me. some dimes. I know I'm, I'm going to stay committed to the work. The word 
ain't going to never change. But I'm going to change if I don't live according to the world. But I learned too, when I have to tell people something, and I get a, a vision or something, go to them, don't try to pet it up. Don't add to it to make it smooth. Just say what God said. Don't try to smooth it. Just say what thus said the Lord God. Thus said the Lord, if you don't straighten up, you know, it's not going to be a good thing. If I've come to you like that, you know, it's not said like thus said the Lord God. He sent me to tell you that. Now I'm not prophesying that. Now I'm just using that as an example. Folks don't really talk like that. That sounds scary now. Somebody can say, thus said the Lord. Like, yes, uh, I say, thus said the Lord God. Oh, the power. God started working on it. And it coming out. What it hit me? Because in the church, I was wrong. But I was a son. And everybody, if you got a good pastor, obey him. Obey him if you got a good pastor. Oh, he's just trying to make you to come where he's at when he leave here. Mm -hmm. Obey that good pastor. Take care of that good pastor. And you obey him by doing what he said. Don't just listen to him say you're right. If he says, don't go to the movie, don't go to the movie. But he may not say it that way. He may say, well, it's up to you. And you make the choice. Is that a hindrance to your going, looking at that stuff? Mm -hmm. And these televisions is horrible. They just fill them with lust. Your children, you leave them there with that TV on. They no more you know. They no more you know. What's the thing I'll add? Leaving them alone. You open the door for incest with your family. Leaving your children alone. Nobody there to watch them in everything, to guide them. They get quiet in the room, you check them. Because that word sex is strong. And when they experience, they don't know what it's all about. They just know they like what they experience. So, y'all, those are things. That, and it's bad now. It's bad. So those are things I just hanging on, feeling that you might use for knowledge. You gonna stand on the word there? I'm stand we, on the word. Cause this this is not gonna change. It's not going to change, buddy. It's gonna be there forever. And you make up your mind. I'm gonna do what thus said the Lord. And the devil gonna fight you so hard. Sometimes you just have to lay on the floor and don't say a word. Sometimes you just have to lay on the floor or just sit in the car and say, Lord, Lord, thou knowest. Help me, Jesus. I got to use that some help. We'll get that determination. Y'all get that determination. Where did your first faith journey begin? Apostolic. I still wanted to be saved, but the lady led me to the Lord. She turned bad, and I went and started going out with my husband. Tommy, uh, yeah, my first good. experience at church. Mm -hmm. I went there, my mama would take me there, and I would look at them people on the floor, wonder what was going on. Lord, give me that vision. I had that vision about my husband there, not going, going to be saved, and uh, got baptized in Berkeley, Mother Talbot. And I got baptized in Jesus' name, filled. And I didn't get the Holy Ghost. About, about how old was you think? Uh, I was married. Oh, oh, you was old. I was married then. Yeah, okay. So, I'll say, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> grown? <laughs> you was grown. I was married then. I don't really. I just knew I was married. Young woman, I was a young woman. Did your first husband go with you when you got baptized? No, I went on the bus. Mm -hmm. I was determined that I was going, I wanted to be saved. So I left all of that world. He got the Holy Ghost down at Ellis Sanders Church. I got the Holy Ghost maybe about two or three o'clock in the morning. Where and all that other the Holy stuff. Ghost? Like in, your, in the house or at the church? At the church, over the night. Three you know, them the days, 
The mothers didn't leave a person to tell They stayed there. Yellow King and all of them. We stayed there until they got the widow. Brother Roots and all. We didn't leave. So it's been Jesus. I had to give up dancing. I was an addict for dancing. I was a dancer. My husband couldn't dance. So it's, it's the thing was, if another good dance was there, and then you take the floor. And I was a dancer. I still dance. I just changed partners. <laughs> Man, I go to church to shout. I go to church to run. That was a funny thing too. One day I said, Lord, I would love to run, but I can't. I could get out of the, I took off running at the church. If I could get that out because I wanted to run. And they laughed at me at least for because I took off running. He got a huge church on, you know, on this place of that mission here. And he got a huge church. And I did it one time. I took off running. And he, the mission here had the nerve to laugh to me when it was I going to make they thought I was going out the door. No, I didn't go out the door. I went right over and back. <laughs> and that pastor, wonder was I going to make it. <laughs> I showed him, Holy Ghost showed him. <laughs> but the Holy Ghost, it makes you move. Anybody at church, you never shout. You say you got the Holy Ghost. You'll never move. You ain't got it like the Bible said. The Holy Ghost. And you can't say Holy you can't sing loud all that. You see, let them win them games come on, I tell them. You let one of them football games, you'll, you'll be screaming and hollering. And when you get to church, it's just like that. When you just done died, I'm gonna tell you, you ain't gotta let go there. Mm -hmm. The children, it's, uh, they getting it. I'm done. <laughs>